Well, listen, this is, uh, I've been telling you and I've been saying that I'm going to be doing this. Uh, Dr. J. Smith here, just to let you know who's speaking. Over the last few months, I have been going through on Fander Films many of the coins, looking at the sequence of coins in the 7th century. And what's been coming up from a lot of the responses are, yes, but the, so the coins do not point to either Muhammad or the Quran or Mecca or the name Islam or the people called Muslims. These five things do not appear uh, in any of the coins, which should have been the case if these are the first Muslims and these are their coinage and these are the caliphs, Mu'awiyah, all the way up until Abdul Malik. So from... Prior to 691, when Abdul Malik finally introduced it, some we may we, we, we may quibble and say 685. Anyways, the time when Abdul Malik was reigning, this idea of Islam really did not exist from uh, what we're seeing on the coins. Now, what has come back? A lot of people have responded, and they have been giving, sending me artifact after artifact, reference after reference, inscription after inscription, pointing to the fact that Islam did exist. So what I'm going to do now, uh, this is a whole new series, and anytime you see me wearing this green color shirt, this is the series concerning the 7th century, Islam in the 7th century. Did it exist prior to 691? And I'm going to be going through every one of those claims by you readers, and also by Muslims that I've heard, and I've been hearing it for years, uh, that Muhammad was born in 570, he started receiving revelations in 610, uh, was living in Mecca, uh, and these revelations that he received came to him in Mecca from 610 to 622, moved to Medina, and from Medina, uh, there in Medina from 622 to 632, the last 10 years of his life, he then received these... Uh, Medinan revelations, which is the first part of the Quran. And then I've also heard then that there was a man named Abu Bakr who came after him, followed by Umar, uh, followed by Uthman, and followed by Ali. Those are known as the four rightly guided caliphs. Now, what's everything that we've heard about that period prior to 661, known as the Rashidun period, and then for the next 30 years, up until 691, has been told from a perspective that only is written down in the 9th and 10th century, by Ibn Hisham, who died in 833, by Al-Buhari, who died in 870, by Sahih Muslim, who died in 875, and others who come after, and then by Al-Tabari, who died in 923. So everything we've known about Islam, and everything that you've known about Islam, and everything that you've been told, and everything that you've studied, and everything that you are permitted to really say about Islam, about this early era, uh, the, about who Muhammad was, what he did, what he said, and all that, comes from two to three hundred years later. You've heard me say this many times. So I'm going back to the seventh century now, and I'm going back to disprove all of those references. See, up till now, what's been fascinating, whenever we have said that uh, Islam did not exist that early, nor did Muhammad do what he did or say what he said, We've always been told that you're only arguing from silence. This is an argument from silence. And as everybody knows who's uh, from a historical field, argument from silence are the most difficult to prove because you're just speaking in a vacuum. You don't really know. You're just assuming it's a hypothesis, nothing more than that. It's silent. You have nothing to show that there was nothing, that Muhammad wasn't there. You have nothing to prove that. And so for the last 40 years, that has been my difficulty. And since 1994, 1995, when I really got into this historical debate, that was always the comeback from every Muslim and from every other historian. You're just arguing from silence, Mr. Smith. Uh, therefore, why should we listen to you? We know that the Islamic traditions are true because there has been 1,400 years of tradition, and these have remained sacrosanct, and nobody has ever really doubted them. Uh, until the revisionists, these revisionists, these defiled, these despicable, these terrible people, these uncouth people that uh, Dr. David King refers to, um, almost looking down their nose at these terrible uh, Orientalists, uh, dirty name, revisionist, dirty name. And I'm both uh, an Orientalist and a revisionist and an Islamophobe and a Muslim hater. And those are the names I'm given all the time because I dare would question, I would dare question the possibility that maybe everything from the 9th and 10th century, maybe everything they're talking about could be su suspect. 
not everything possibly, but much of what they were saying about this man living at that place, doing these things and saying these things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the tables and I'm going to ask Muslims now to prove, prove to me that Muhammad did live in the seventh century, prove to me that he did receive a Quran between 610 and 632. You prove to me that there were the things that he said, he actually said, the things he did, he actually did, that he lived in a place called Mecca, that there was even a place called Mecca uh, in 610 uh, and 6 to 622 when he moved up to Medina. Prove to me that he referred to himself as a Muslim and that there was a religion called Islam. That's all I'm asking those five things. The man Muhammad, the religion called Islam, the people called Muslims, the place called Mecca, and the book called the Quran. If you could support those five things from before 691, not references here or there, or even try that. Let's go ahead. So what I want to do is I want to see what you can come up with. I want to see if you're not arguing from science. Silence, because I assume, I'm assuming that you are arguing from silence, that you're not going to be able to support Muhammad or Mecca or the Quran or people called Muslims or the religion Islam from the 7th century prior to 691. So everything that you can find to support your narrative, send me. Now, some of them I've already got. And I'm going to be going through them. And this is going to be the introduction. Every day I'm going to put up something new. I'm going to try to do this every day. I may not be able to get it to it every day because of my other commitments that I have. I have other deadlines that I have to do. But I'm going to try to take every each one of your claims. I've already got a few here. I've got nine pages of already claims that have been made. And I'm going to debunk every one of them using historical evidence. Looking at the inscriptions, looking at the poetry, looking at the letters, looking at the artifacts, looking at anything that you can bring my way, show me to prove to me that this man did live at that time, at that place, doing those things and saying what he said. I want to see if you're not arguing from silence, because everything I'm going to take, then all I'm going to, and I will try and I will do the research, and there are others who've already researched before. I'm not the only one that's done this. Uh, I'm going to be using the research of others. But I'm going to prove that in every case, we can debunk them. In every case, we can show that this man did not live at that time. He may, he may I mean, he, were, there may have been a Muhammad. I'm not going to say he did not exist. But the stories we know about him from the 9th and 10th century, I suggest, are fraudulent. Everything that, we're say, that we've heard him say, I suggest, are fraudulent. These letters that he wrote to St. Catherine's Monastery, the Akname, these letters that he wrote to Heraclius, I'm going to debunk those letters. The poetry, supposedly, that existed at the time of Muhammad, I'm going to debunk those. These inscriptions, they're all referring to this place called Mecca, or this, Muhammad, this person called Muhammad, or these inscriptions referring to people called Muslims, I'm going to debunk every one of those. This dam that has an inscription on it, I'm going to be debunk debunking all of them. In fact, I'm going to go through each one of these systematically and debunk them. And this may continue for years to come. This may be the beginning. I will try to wear this shirt as many times. Whenever I'm going to try to debunk something, I will wear, wear this color shirt so you know that I'm on that theme. Because I think this is where we need to go. I'm sick and tired of being called an Islamophobe. I'm sick and tired of being called an Islamic hater. I'm sick and tired of being called a, a, an Orientalist or a somebody who is nothing more than a revisionist. Uh, if I am a revisionist, then I want you to prove that I'm a revisionist. Because what I'm going to suggest is that you Muslims are the revisionist. You're the ones who are, have concocted a religion much, much later, redacted it back to the 7th century, yet you cannot support what you're saying from the 7th century. You cannot support what you're saying from the 7th century. And so that's why I want to go back to the 7th century. I'm doing what we should have done from the very beginning. This should have been done 25 years ago, uh, or even that, 25 years ago when I first heard, when I did my first debate there at uh, in Oxford University. I'm sorry, in Cambridge University, there with Dr. Jamal Badawi. At that debate, I should have really been asking these questions. The first debate I ever did, Dr. Jamal Badawi, in August of 1995, where I gave 10 historical challenges. At the, that debate, I should introduce what I'm going to be introducing now. And just going to all these claims that Muslims have made, 
and seeing whether or not any of them are true. Come with me. Let's see what we find. And it could be that I may prove myself wrong. It could be that I may find out that there is a man named Muhammad who did live between 570 and 632, who did live in a place called Mecca, who did move up to Medina in 622, who did receive a Quran between 610 and 632, who did call himself a Muslim, and who was the first to really inaugurate the religion called Islam. I could have to, may, I may have to eat my own words. I don't think I will. So come with me. Let's do this walk together. Let's discover this together and let's see what we find. Okay, this is Jay here in April. Well, today is April the 19th of 2020. Let's see how much of Islam we can debunk. This is Jay then. Over and out.